it. Allow the heaviness of your bones to settle. Ground you down. Connect you to the earth. And if it's comfortable to extend the heels away from your crown, you can do that. If that causes any low back discomfort, just keep the knees bent, take the feet a little bit wide and let the knees fall together. I mean, take a moment to check in with yourself before we get moving. Bring your awareness to your breath and notice the quality of the breath in this moment. Notice if your chest feels tight or open, if your breath is short or long, if the inhales or the exhales bear more weight, And then bring your awareness to the diaphragm. And as you inhale, feel it expand downward. As you exhale, soften back and spread wide across the floor. With your next inhale, take your awareness past your diaphragm. Breathe all the way down into the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes. And as you exhale completely, <sighs> soften more deeply into the support of the ground beneath you. Have a few more deep, long breaths, just like that. Breathing your awareness back down into your body and softening back and spreading wide across the floor, feeling that stacking of the bones and joints in the back body plane that allows the skeletal system to support you, that allows the energy to flow through the body optimally. And then with your next inhale, start at the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes and inhale, pull your awareness up through the legs, into your pelvis, your hips and your low back. Notice any areas of tension, soreness, general discomfort, and as always, feel free to make adjustments. Then inhale deeply into those areas. Gently open and expand with the in-breath. And as you exhale completely, allow tension to leave the body with the breath. Next inhale, pulls your awareness up the torso into your shoulders, your neck, and your face. Once again, just noticing where in your upper body you're holding tension today. And use the breath to go there. Inhale, gently create space. Invite fresh blood and oxygen to flow through those areas. And as you exhale completely, Continue the conversation of consciously asking your body to soften, release, and let go. Lastly, bring your awareness into your mind and notice where your thoughts are at. Notice the speed at which they move through you Allow yourself to step back from identifying as your thoughts and begin to witness their passing. 
through your mind like clouds through the sky without getting attached and carried away, without judging yourself for what you're thinking about, but beginning to notice the habits and patterns in the way your mind turns. And then return your awareness to anchor on your breath. Have a few more of those deep, long breaths. Breathing all the way down into the bottoms of your feet and the tips of your toes. And as you exhale completely, sink into the support of the ground beneath you. Allow yourself to be held by the earth and by this practice. When you are ready, you're going to inhale and bend your knees, ground both feet. Then cross the right ankle over the left knee. Bring your palms into your hip creases. That right foot is going to either point or flex, but it's going to be active to keep the ankle in line with the knee joint. Stick your booty out slightly towards the floor, thigh bones back. And then press the thigh bones away from you as you lengthen the crown of the head in the opposite direction, making space in your lower back. Have five more deep, long breaths. It might be accessible to interlace your hands behind your left thigh. Continue pushing the legs into the hands to lengthen the low back. And then drawing your legs more actively towards yourself to stretch through the outer right hip. Use the breath to go into those places that feel tight and sore and stuck. And as you exhale completely, soften more deeply into the stretch. Good. Release. Both feet are grounded. You can sway the knees from side to side for a moment. And then crossing the left ankle over the right knee, keeping that left foot pointed or flexed, but just making sure it's active to keep the ankle in line with the knee joint. Bring the palms of the hands into the hip creases. Stick your booty out towards the floor and press the thigh bones away from you. So these actions are gonna continue to reoccur as we Work on the alignment in the pelvis. Sticking our booty out takes our thigh bones back. Pressing the thigh bones away from you here roots your tailbone down. Feel all that length and space in your lower back and maintain it, even if you decide to interlace your hands behind your right thigh. Press the legs into the hands. Keep that space in the lower back as you draw the legs more actively towards yourself. Have a few more deep, long breaths. Use your breath to go into the places that feel tight and sore and stuck. And as you exhale completely, <sighs> ask the body to release. Then you can release everything and sway your knees from side to side once again. Then draw your knees into your chest and rock gently from side to side. Massage your lower back. With an exhale, roll onto your right side. Press down with your palms to lift up. Come to a comfortable seated position. Keep your eyes closed for just a moment. Scan your body from the ground up. 
looking for that same stacking of the bones and joints in the back body plane that brings a lightness into your body. Remembering that we must get the pelvis into a neutral position here so we can ground down and lift up. If the pelvis is tipped backwards, the shoulders compensate, it becomes nearly impossible to lengthen the spine. So if you know that that's your tendency, you want to have a blanket, a block, something handy to sit up on. It also may help to inner rotate the thigh bones, moving the flesh of the buttocks out. You want to feel and find the sits bones at the base of the pelvis. And make sure that you're pressing down evenly on both sides. From that grounding in your lower body, inhale, lift and lengthen through the crown of the head and the tips of the ears. Inhale, the shoulders up to the ears. And exhale, roll them together down and into the back body, fully broadening the chest. And then as we get the shoulders rolled back, we have to slide the jawbone back, aligning this internal antenna within us that connects us to all things. And we are focusing our awareness in the pelvis and hips today, the site of the second chakra governing sexuality, emotions, and subconscious creativity. Um, the hips are where we hold our traumas and dramas, where we kind of bury and shove down um, our deepest, darkest secrets. And the work of going into the hips is, a work, is the work of plunging into our own depths and our own darkness. And this is kind of my favorite part of the yoga practice. And, and it's a part that is often overlooked. But whatever conditioning and programs we have, um, whatever fears and traumas that we're not willing to look at, whatever we have buried in our subconscious, you know, and it exerts an effect on our lives, an effect that we are often unaware of or unwilling to admit and confront. So kind of like the most agency and power we can find and have through our practice is to um, go into this area and to bring some of those things to the surface and some of those things to light. Um, it takes a lot of energy to maintain walls within yourself and to shut off parts of yourself. And again, these things have ripple effects through your whole body and being and life. So as we open the hips, you know, I, I like to warn people to be aware that feelings, memories, sensations that are uncomfortable might come up. But having these things come up on our practice or on our mat gives us the opportunity to practice handling, acknowledging, naming, and releasing them. Um, the pelvis is a container. It has to have boundaries and containment on the outside. And then openness and the ability for things to flow through and be released on the inside. The element here is water. And we want to be able to both be in our emotions and experience them deeply, but then to also step back onto the banks of the river and allow things to move through us, to witness them and let them go. So that's what we will practice and cultivate today. You can inhale and just reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, release through the mouth with sound. 
Two more times like that. Inhale deeply. <sighs> Exhale completely. One more time. Inhale, stretch past the skin and fingertips. And exhale, let it all go. We'll inhale to prepare for the sound of Om three times together. and allow those vibrations to resonate through the body. Shaking up and clearing out the places where your energy has gotten stuck and stagnant. This is the root cause of all dis-ease in the body. And all of our practices are just to help us become aware of where things are blocked and stuck. So we can get in there, we can ask questions, we can be in conversation with our bodies and start to open up. We'll take a moment to connect more deeply to our breath, cultivating ujjayi breath, victorious breath, the victory of the higher self, of the consciousness over the fears and anxieties of the small self. So ujjayi breath is just inhaling and exhaling through your nose while tightening up the back of your throat like you're fogging up a mirror. It generates a sound like waves crashing on the shore that acts as a focal point to steady the mind so we can witness what arises, abides, and dissolves. So you can continue to breathe in and out through the nose at your own pace, tightening up through the back of your throat and allowing the breath to become gently audible, like waves crashing on the shore. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose in general slows the breath down, which is calming for the nervous system. Tightening up the back of the throat, constricting the air passageway, further slows the breath down. And it begins to generate a heat in the body, which is another one of the tools that we use in this practice to clear out and purify our energy channels. So you can continue with this ujjayi breath throughout the practice today. When you are ready, inhale and gently open your eyes. Make your way onto your hands and knees. Spread your fingers wide. Ground your knees right under your hips. As you inhale, drop your abdomen down, tilt your tailbone and your gaze up. As you exhale, root the tailbone down, chin into the chest, spine curls to the ceiling. Continue at your own pace. Sync the motions of the body with your breath. Allow your breath to deepen the motions of your body. And move in any way that feels good to you within the confines of the shape allowing the mind to connect and receive the wisdom of your body, allowing the practice to be a playful exploration, full of curiosity. And you can begin to circle the hips in one direction, 
widening them to the side and back to the other side and forward a little bit. Have three hip circles in one direction. And then switch directions. Moving slowly, feeling free to pause and explore tension. Breathing your awareness into those places that feel tight and sore and stuck, just gathering this information about the tendencies in your body. And when you are ready, you can tuck your toes, lift your hips high, and press back to downward facing dog. Feel free to pedal your feet, sway your hips, or move in any way that feels good to you here. Get your wiggles out so that we can find some stillness. Hands and feet evenly grounded. Outer edge of your feet turn parallel with outer edge of the mat. See if you can feel how that rolls the thigh bone into the hip socket all the way up your leg. If your hips are tight and the low back is rounded, or if your knees tend to hyperextend, take a slight bend in your knees. Bend them wide over your ankles. And then with an inhale, lift the hips high. Lift from the back of the knees up to the sits bones. Exhale, press your thigh bones up and back to where the wall meets the ceiling. Let your heels ground down energetically towards the floor. Three more deep long breaths here. So the first action of the pose is up, abdomen lifts, hips lift. Second action is back. With an inhale, go forward into your plank pose. You can lower the knees down behind the hips for some support here. And then we're lifting the thigh bones, sticking your booty out gently. Lift the abdomen and the back of the ribs to meet the shoulder blades. Root your tailbone down towards your knees or your heels. Feel the energy come into the legs. From that energy, inhale, breathe length and space into each vertebrae in your spine. And with an exhale, lower knees, chest, chin to the floor. With your booty lifted up here, feel that arch in your lower back. And then root your tailbone down and feel the engagement of the lower abdomen. Keep that as you press the tops of the feet down. And inhale, lift the heart, roll the shoulders back, low cobra. The tailbone continues to root towards the heels. Press your pinky toe heel into the floor and feel the sacrum spread wide. Have one more big breath here. And exhale, seat to heels. Come into child's pose. Allow the weight of the hips to settle energetically towards the heels. So the energy from the hips is always moving through the legs towards the heels, even when we turn ourselves upside down. From that grounding of the lower body, the, the hips don't have to touch the heels, but energetically they settle. Inhale and walk your fingertips forward. Breathe length and space into each vertebrae in your spine. And exhale here. Widen your left hip to the left. As you inhale, lift the abdomen and walk the hands to the right. Place your abdomen on your right thigh. Stretch both side bodies and sides of the neck long for three more deep long breaths. Inhale back up to center.
center. Widen your right hip to the right. Lift your abdomen and walk your hands to the left. Place your abdomen down on the left thigh. Be with your breath. The inhale fills the whole body from the inside out. And as you exhale, completely <sighs> see what you can release and let go of. With an inhale, return to center and exhale here. Inhale, rise, arch the back, gaze up. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips high, press back. Downward facing dog. Taking a slight bend in the knees if it's useful to you. And lifting from the back of the knees up as you press from the back of the knees down. Lift and spread your fingers and toes. Feel how that draws the energy in and up. Lower them down, but keep that engagement in the shins and forearms. Keep pressing through your big toe mound to lift your inner arch and ankle. From that grounding of the lower body, again, inhale, lift the abdomen and lift your hips high. Exhale, thigh bones up and back to where the wall meets the ceiling. Three more deep, long breaths. Connecting this action of the thigh bones to the space and shape of your lower back. With an inhale, begin to walk your feet forward to meet your hands. Come into a standing forward bend. Always an option to bend the knees here. Allow your abdomen to come towards your thighs. Let your head hang heavy. Shake your head yes and no. Grab opposite elbows and sway. Move in any way that feels good to you to release the tension from the back, the shoulders, and the neck. Let it drain out through the crown of your head. With an inhale, return to center. And exhale through the mouth with sound. <sighs> release the arms down. With your next inhale, begin to roll the spine up. The pelvis spins around the femur bones. The vertebrae begin to stack. The head and shoulders are the last things to rise. What did I do with my hair tie? Good, we're coming to the top of our mats and just taking a moment to check in with our alignment. So even though, thank you Vivian, you're the best. Even though um, as the shapes shift, the alignment principles are universal. So we just need to learn to find them in all the different shapes. We're standing, stand with your feet as wide as your hips and the outer edge of your feet parallel with the outer edge of your mat. Remembering that that is going to rotate your thigh bone into your hip socket all the way up your leg. With the feet facing forward, stick your butt out a little bit. Take the center of the hips over the knees and ankles and maintaining that. So at each level of the body, we're balancing different actions and different aspects, right? So the thigh bones are back and we draw the center of the buttocks into the midline to root the tailbone down. We don't want to go in too far because that's going to crunch the lower back. All of these actions are to create space in the body. So thigh bones back, broadens the sacrum, center of the buttocks into the midline, roots the tailbone down with lengthens the, the lower back area. As the tailbone roots, the pelvic triangle, the frontal hip bones, the low abdomen draw in and up to the spine. So everything becomes contained and then there's a spaciousness and an openness on the inside 
through which things can release and move through us. From that grounding in the lower body, inhale and reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen here. And exhale, fold more deeply. We'll do that a few times. It's fine if your knees are bent, but as you inhale, gaze forward, lengthen, the thigh bones move back, and we lift from the back of the knees up. As you exhale, press from the back of the knees down and fold more deeply. Explore those actions a few more times. Inhale, gaze forward, get length. Exhale, root down and fold more deeply. Two more times. Remembering that if your knees hyperextend, you can work with the bend and that's action of lifting up and pressing down. Even here, we are moving towards the hips stacked over the knees and the ankles. With an inhale, gaze forward, get leg. Exhale, step your left leg back, lower your left knee down, and inhale, rise. Anjane Asana. Hug, what are you doing, Rubia? Hug your legs energetically towards each other like scissors. Feel how this takes your thigh bones, the, your front thigh bone back, brings your back hip forward, engages your inner thigh muscles, and then root your tailbone down. Pelvic triangle lifts in and up as you take the whole center of the buttocks forward. You can have your hands on the floor on your front thigh or lift them up overhead. You can stay right here or you can grab the left wrist with the right hand and lean, exhale up and over to the right side. Have three breaths wherever you're working. And inhale back to center. We're gonna shift our weight back over our back knee, and then we're turning um, to open the hips in the side body plane. You wanna have your left hip stacked over your left knee. This pose is one of the most challenging poses for me. I kind of absolutely hate it, which is why I need to integrate it into my practice. The right toes are turned up and flexed. The thigh bone of the right leg pressing down, the buttocks hugging into the midline. And if your knees hyperextend here, you really gotta work that slight bend in the knee, lift from the back of the knee up, Press from the back of the knee down. Our right hand rests palm facing up on the thigh. And inhale, lift your left arm up. There's a slight widening of the left thigh out to the left. Rooting down that right thigh bone, hug the buttocks into the midline and slide your hand down your leg as you stretch in the side body plane for Paragasana gate pose. Have three breaths here. Oh, good. Inhale, rise. And returning back to face forward. With an inhale, step your back leg forward. Get length through your spine. Exhale, fold more deeply. Inhale, gaze forward. Get length. Exhale, step your right leg back. Lower your right knee down. You can keep your hands on the floor. Bring them onto the front thigh or lift them up. The front knee stays stacked over the ankle. And as you inhale, pull your legs towards each other. It's gonna take you up and out of the pose a little bit so you can align the pelvis. Tailbone rooting down. Frontal hip bones, pelvic triangle lifting in and up. Take the center of the buttocks forward. Take whatever variation you took on the other side. Maybe grab the right wrist with the left hand and exhale up and over to the left side. 
three breaths. You want to, even if you're leaning to the side, all the bones and joints stack in a gentle curve. Good. And shift the weight back over your back knee. And then we're turning that right knee behind us. The right hip stays stacked over the right knee. And the left heel is in line with the right knee. This thigh bone, left thigh bone pressing down and the buttock hugs into the midline of the body. If your knee hyperextends like mine does, Slight bend in the knee and lifting from the back of the knee up as you press from the back of your knee down. Left palm rests on the thigh facing up. We're not pressing into our leg here. Inhale, lift your right arm up. Widen the right inner thigh to the right as you slide your palm down and lean up and over. Have three deep long breaths. Stretching in all directions to make space on the inside of the body. And with an inhale, rise. Turn to face the front leg, bend your knee. Inhale, step your back foot forward. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, come to stand. Exhale, release your arms down by your sides. Check back in with your alignment. My right foot is like always just in front of my left, so I have to pull it back. Usually my hips go forward and I have to draw my thigh bones back. Stack your bones and joints. Find the balance of these actions. Thigh bones back, center of the buttocks into the midline. And inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step the left leg back again. This time, keep your back knee lifted. Lunge on the right side. Front knee stacks over the ankle, and as you inhale, pull the legs towards each other. Feel how that lifts your back thigh bone. Widen that left inner thigh to the left to act as a stabilizing force on the pelvis as you inhale and lift your right arm up for a twist. Press out through your palms to roll your shoulders together down and into your back body. Have three breaths here. And with an exhale, release. Straighten both legs. You can keep the back heel lifted here, but energetically pressing towards the floor. Flex your front foot. Pull energetically from your heel back into your hip socket. So the both hips face forward. Thigh bones press back to lengthen through the lower back. Inhale, lift your abdomen, and exhale, fold more deeply. Even if the front knee is slightly bent, that's fine, but there's that lift from the back of the knee up, and a pressing from the back of the knee down. Good. Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, bend that front knee. Inhale, step your back foot forward. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen. Exhale, right leg back. Keep your knee lifted. Front knee stacks over the ankle. Inhale, scissor the legs together. Feel the back thigh bone lift and lift your belly button towards your spine. Extend through the heel and the crown of the head. Widen the right inner thigh to the right, and inhale, lift your left arm up for a twist. Hips stay facing forward. Twist happens at the core. Press through your palms to roll the shoulders together down and into the back. Three breaths. Ah. 
and exhale, release. Straighten both legs. You can keep the back heel lifted here. Flex your front foot. Pull energetically from the heel back into the hip socket. Ground the foot down. Press both thigh bones back to lengthen the lower back. Even if your front knee is slightly bent, you're lifting from the back of the knee up as you press from the back of the knee down. Inhale, lift your abdomen. And exhale, fold more deeply into that straight front leg. Thigh bone pressing away. Frontal hip bone lifting up. And with an inhale, lift the chest and the gaze. Exhale, bend your front knee. Inhale, step your back foot forward. Exhale, fold deeply. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, come to stand. Exhale, release your arms down by your sides. Tadasana, mountain pose. Good. We'll take our feet wide. Outer edge of your feet are parallel with outer edge of the mat. Turn your left foot in slightly. Turn your right foot out all the way. Lift and spread your toes, stretch them out, ground them down. This back thigh bone is back in line with the knee and ankle on the back leg. Press firmly into your heel of the right foot and grip the muscles all the way up on the thigh bone and turn out from the thigh. Then a deep bend in your front knee. Stack the knee right over the ankle. That back thigh bone is inner rotated slightly, so it's in the hip socket. And then we press both thigh bones back to fully open our hips in the side body plane. Notice if you have a tendency to sink the frontal hip bone down towards the thigh bone here. Lift up. We'll root the tailbone down right between the sit bones. Gaze over your front fingertips. Three more deep bone breaths. Inhale, straighten your front leg. Turn the right foot in slightly, the left foot out all the way. Lift and spread your toes, stretch them out, ground them down. Press into that heel of the front leg to turn the thigh bone out from the top. Back thigh bone back in line with the knee and ankle. So bones and joints stacked. And then a deep bend in your front knee. Slight inner rotation of the back thigh. Both thigh bones press back. Tailbone rooting down right between the sits bones. You might have to lift that frontal hip bone up a little bit. Gaze over your front fingertips. Three more deep long breaths. Good. Inhale, straighten that front leg. Turn the outer edge of both feet parallel with the outer edge of the mat. Hands come to your hips. Sticking your booty out a little bit, center of the hips over the knees and ankles as you root down to the heels. Inhale, lift the abdomen. Exhale, fold forward. Hinge at the hips. Allow your head to hang heavy. Maybe it comes to the floor. Ground your palms. You can ground them under your shoulders or you can ground them between your feet. If they're between the feet, the fingertips face towards your face. The hands and elbows are as wide as the shoulders. Press down into the palms to lift the shoulders away from the ears. Lift and spread your toes, stretch them out, ground them down. Slight bend in the knees and from the back of the knees, lift up. From the back of the knees, press down. Frontal hip bones still drawing back away from the thigh bones. Three more deep long breaths. Good. 
and inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, root down to rise up. Left foot turns in slightly. Right foot turns out all the way. Extend the arms parallel to the earth. Left thigh bone back in line with the knee and ankle. Lift and spread your toes, stretch them out, ground them down. Again, pressing into the heel to grip the thigh and turn out from the top of your leg. As you exhale, widen the back hip back and cut the front thigh bone back. Keep your front buttock hugged into the midline of the body, which is gonna lift the back hip up and back. Stretch your side bodies long. Come down into your triangle pose. If your hand is on your shin, that's fine, but don't collapse the joint. Slight bend in the knees, lift up from the back of the knees to the sit bones. Press down from the back of the knees to the heels. Three breaths. Scanning your body for places that are compressed and making adjustments. Very often it's this front side of the lower back, which means press your thigh bone back more Hug your buttock into the midline of your body. With an inhale, rise. Turn the right foot in slightly, left foot out all the way. Lift and spread your toes. Feel the muscles hug into the bones. Press through that left heel and turn. Grip the muscles on the top of the thigh. Maintain that as you lower the toes down. Back thigh bone back, and then it widens back as you reach the front fingertips forward. That front thigh bone cutting back so the pelvis shifts, buttocks into the midline, stretch the side bodies long as you come down, and then check back in. Learning your tendencies and where exactly your work lies. Often we need to Cut the front thigh bone back and hug the buttock into the midline. Keeping that back thigh bone back, but then also lifting the hip up and back. If your knees hyperextend, slight bend in the knees, lift from the back of the knees up and press from the back of the knees down. Have one more big breath. And inhale, rise. Turn your feet. Um, we're going to actually turn the feet slightly out and you're going to inhale here and exhale, bend your knee, touch your right ankle with your left hand. Inhale to center. Exhale, bend your left knee, touch your left ankle with your right hand. We're going to do that four more times in each direction. You can move at your own pace. You want to just make sure that your foot is turned out slightly and that your knee is bending over your ankle. <sighs> what, Lydia? Okay, you're going to have to wait. Once you've done five times in each direction, left foot parallel with the back edge of the mat, right foot face forward. This time the deep bend in the front knee. You can bring your elbow to your knee. You can bring your fingertips to the floor behind your foot. All the alignment principles remain. Thigh bone of the left leg back, press from the tailbone through the back heel. This front thigh bone is dropping down and your buttock is hugging into the midline of your body. Inhale, reach your arm over your ear. Stretch in opposite directions to make space on the inside. Three more deep long breaths. Rooting the tailbone down, lifting the frontal hip bones up. Ah, great. Inhale, rise. Straighten your front leg. Turn that right foot in slightly and the left foot out all the way. Deep bend in your front knee. Bring your elbow to your knee or your fingertips to the floor behind your foot. Back thigh bone back. Press from the tailbone through the back heel and the back edge of the back foot. Front buttock down and into the midline of the body. 
lifting the frontal hip bones and turning the abdomen back to the right. Stretch in opposite directions from the sacrum. Have three more deep, long breaths. And with an inhale, rise. Exhale, turn your feet in slightly and fold forward. We're gonna, again, shift the weight from side to side. Being aware of your knee. This time we're bending to the left. Try to keep that, no, bending to the right, sorry. Try to keep that left foot grounded. Going back and forth a few times, trying to keep your opposite foot grounded. And then play with nosy. Play with flexing the opposite foot and see how that feels. Go like three times in each direction with each variation in your foot. What? Oh. And then we'll return to center. Outer edge of the feet parallel with outer edge of the mat. Bring your hands to your hips. Root down to rise up. Step or jump your feet together. And then you just check on what time it is. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Okay. Um, I'm going to restart the Instagram because we only get one hour on Instagram. What just happened? What? I just ended this and that is what happened. Mm. Okay, I don't know what's happening there, but it's fine. Good, we'll do a balancing pose. And then we'll begin to wind down. So you can shift your, yeah, we're gonna, um, we'll do dancing Shiva so you can shift your weight onto your right foot. Make sure the outer edge of your foot is parallel with the outer edge of the mat. And bend your right knee, oh, no, sorry, left knee. <laughs> that would be very difficult. Um, Stick your booty out towards your heel, that thigh bone back action, and root your tailbone down. You'll feel it deepen the quad stretch on the left leg. Inhale, lift your right arm up, and with an exhale, kick the foot into the hand, pull the hands on the foot, and come forward and down. We're trying to keep our hips facing forward as much as possible, so still hugging the legs energetically towards each other. Root the tailbone down, lift the frontal hip bones. Pull the right shoulder back and the left shoulder forward. Have three more deep long breaths. And inhale, rise. And exhale, release. Shake it out a little bit. And then shift your weight to your left foot. Make sure your left foot faces forward. Bend your right knee. Stick your booty out towards your heel. See how that takes your thigh bone back? Tap the hip and the ankle. Tap the hip over the knee and ankle of your standing leg. And then root your tailbone down. Feel that quad stretch on the right side. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, kick back. Pull the hand on the foot. Open and up. As much as we can, we want our hips facing forward. So pulling them together energetically, root the tailbone down, lift the frontal hip bones. Left shoulder draws back, right shoulder draws forward. Three breaths. And inhale, rise. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead. 
Exhale, fold forward over your legs. Inhale, gaze forward, lengthen your spine. Exhale, ground your palms, step back. You can choose to come to down dog or to come to child's pose. Wherever you're working, return your awareness to your breath. Allow it to be deep and long. Notice where in your body you're still holding tension and where some things may have shifted. Observe the speed of your thoughts through your mind in this moment. And then return your awareness to anchor fully on your breath. having all kinds of technology issues. You, if you're in down dog, you can, actually let's all come forward onto our abdomens. Getting there, any way that feels good. Vivian, can you help me? Can you, what is going on with this video on my phone? Good. Can you try to figure it out? Go ahead. We are going to Stretch our um, quads here again. So you're rising up onto your forearms in sphinx pose. Good. And tailbone roots down towards your heels. Bend your right leg. Turn your left forearm in at 45 degrees and grab your right foot with your right hand. Maybe you can spin around so your fingertips face the same direction as your toes and your elbow lifts up. Maybe that's not happening today and that's fine. We don't want to let the knees splay out here. We want to keep it drawn into the midline, press down through the foot and lift the chest. Draw your low abdomen back and root your tailbone down. You can stay here or straighten your arm. Three more deep long breaths. And exhale, release. Back in this sphinx pose, shimmy the hips from side to side, wiggle it out a little bit, and then turn your right forearm into the 45 degree angle. Bend your left knee. Reach behind you to grab the left foot with the left hand. Maybe your hand can spin around so your fingertips face the same direction as your toe and you can lift your elbow up. But even if that's not happening, you're just drawing the foot in towards the outer edge of your buttock and root your tailbone down. Don't let your knees play out. Lift the lower belly button, the lower abdomen towards the spine. And then if you did so on the other side, straighten your front leg. Right shoulder back, left shoulder forward, three breaths. And exhale, release. Again, you can shimmy out your hips a little bit. And then we'll roll over onto our backs. Bend your knees and ground your feet in close to your buttocks. Make sure your feet are facing forward, outer edge of the feet parallel with outer edge of the mat. We do not want our feet to turn out here. When our feet turn out in our bridge pose, it means we're using our big glutes and we're crunching our lower back. So feet facing forward, press the back of the head and shoulders into the mat. Inhale, lift your pelvis, your low back, your middle back. Interlace your hands beneath you, or just roll your palms to face up to roll your shoulders under. Everything on the ground presses firmly into the ground to lift the heart. From the heart, extend through your knees. From the heart, extend through your crown. And then soften your buttocks. Make sure you are not gripping the buttocks here. Three more deep long breaths. Will you look at the video again, Vivian? 
And share if it says share. Exhale, release. With the feet wide, again, you can sway your knees from side to side. Then draw your knees into your chest and rock from side to side a little bit. Massage your low back. Rock forward. And back to come up to seated. Balance for a moment on your sits bones. Hugging your knees into your chest. Roll your shoulders together down and into your back body. Hands. Okay. And the hands extend and then straighten your legs. Five breaths here. Other way. Thank you. And exhale, release. Go ahead. And extend both legs out. And then return to how we began at the beginning. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. Keeping that right foot either pointed or flexed, but active in some way to keep the ankle in line with the hinge of the knee joint. Ground your fingertips by your hips. And with an inhale, lift and lengthen through the spine. Again, if your pelvis is tilted back here, the work is really just to lift up. If sitting up on a blanket helps you do that, please do it. Because when we are, our pelvis is rolled back and we try to fold forward, we're really just straining one part of our back, right? So first getting all of that lift and length through your spine, and then walk your fingertips forward. Remember that we are not like trying to force our nose to our knees. But we're keeping our shoulders back and we're drawing our heart out towards our left foot. Have five deep long breaths here. Good. With an inhale, slowly rise. Extend the right leg out and switch sides. Cross your left ankle over your right knee. Keep that left foot either pointed or flexed, but active in some way. Press both sits bones down and lift the abdomen, the heart, and the crown. Remembering that first you have to get all that lift from the base of the spine. And then you can fold, walking your fingertips forward. Find the edge of the shape for yourself. And be with the breath for five deep, long breaths. Breathe into the places that feel tight and sore and stuck. And as you exhale completely, See where you can soften, release, and let go. And with an inhale, slowly rise. Switch side. Well, release your left leg. Now we're going to take the knees on top of each other or moving towards that as much as possible. So the left foot is flexed and active, and the right knee comes over the left knee as much as possible. Press the pinky toe edge of your foot into the floor to keep it active, ankle in line with the knee joint. Ground your fingertips by your hips, and inhale, lift from the base of the spine up. You might already be feeling a deep stretch through your outer right hip, and if that's the case, just stay here. Just lift your spine. If you want to take it a little deeper, you can begin to hinge at the hips, drawing the heart forward towards the left foot. Wherever you find yourself, 
five deep long breaths. With an inhale, rise, extend the right leg out, draw the left knee in to cross over the right knee, press through the pinky edge of the left foot, and observe what comes up when we go into the hips. Maybe you are already feeling it, and you just want to lift from the base of the spine, Maybe you feel ready to fold forward, drawing your heart towards your foot. Breathing deeply into that outer left hip. Just watching what arises, abides, and dissolves. Noticing how the mind turns and how you speak to yourself when the body is stretched to its maximum capacity. With an inhale, slowly rise. Take your legs wide. Flex your feet straight up. Press your thigh bones down, tailbone down. Inhale, lift the frontal hip bones. Lift the crown of the head and the tips of the ears. And then begin to fold forward here. So really, always in our yoga practice, it's less about um, getting our face to the floor and more about maintaining engagement and alignment as we work. So sits bones grounded, toes flexed and active, pointing up. And then breathe into the stretch. <sighs> I'm gonna take a deep breath. It feels amazing. You should try it. <sighs> With an inhale, you can slowly rise. And make your way to Shavasana. Coming to lay down on your back. If you have a chair handy, I cannot emphasize enough that placing the calves on the chair for Shavasana, you can put them up on the couch or wherever, is my favorite way to do it. That chair is much too high for you. It is not. It is. Whether your legs are on the chair, extended out along the mat, or if you just want to take, bend your knees, feet as wide as the mat, and let the knees fall together. Return your awareness to your breath and allow your breath to be so deep and so long that it touches down into the bottoms of the feet and the tips of the toes. As you exhale completely, just let your feet just relax against the chair. Any residual tension leaves the body with the breath through your fingertips. So through this practice, 
we can begin to shake up and clear out those deeply embedded patterns and programs, shining the light of awareness onto them and finding space to adjust and make changes. Take this moment to savor any insights you've received, any nonsense you were able to release from your body or your mind through your practice today. And then begin to intentionally deepen your inhales. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Gently sway your head from side to side. 
With an inhale, stretch your arms up and overhead. Give yourself a big stretch from fingertips to tippy toes. <laughs> Exhale here. <laughs> Bailey, you just stuck your tongue in my mouth. Inhale, draw your knees into your chest. And exhale, roll onto the right side body. Pause in your fetal position for a moment. Gather your bearings. When you are ready, press down with the palms to lift up. Come to a comfortable seated position. Keep your eyes closed for just another moment. <laughs> Check back in with the quality of your breath after your practice. Notice where in the body you're still holding tension and where some things may have shifted. Observe the speed of your thoughts through your mind in this moment. And then return the awareness to anchor fully on your breath. We will seal our collective efforts with a single ohm, allowing the breath to reach through the tailbone, through the floor, to the center of the earth. And as you exhale, lean into the back body so the sound can resonate through the whole spine. Inhale deeply. Bring your hands to your heart and bow your head in gratitude for the tools of this practice that encourage us to dig deep into our own darkness to discover what has been holding us back and to release it. Thank you guys so much for coming to class. You're welcome. Thanks Vivian <laughs> for disturbing everything. I told you <laughs> that you were destroying everything. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good. They're all music. Good, good, good. <laughs> Very good, except for that girl in blue. Dude, the dog like licked, put her tongue like in my mouth while I was in <laughs> and I was like, ah! <laughs> I lost my rubber band. They're all over the floor. No, not those ones. All right, not well, have a great day, y'all. Don't leave me. Hi, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Good to see your faces. Me not stay. <laughs> all right. Hey, it's still recording. Thanks.